Hello, uh, I'm Aur. I'm going to talk about arbitrary code execution, uh, computer security vulnerabilities. Computer security is a field very much alike to real security, like when you want to put a guard in front of a bank and put some alarms to uh, prevent people from stealing your uh, art from your museum. So most of it is really alike to this. But there's one part of computer security that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. It's a subfield completely unique to computers, and that is arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities, which I'm going to talk about. Um, the whole uh, talk is going to be in a metaphor, which I stole from Feynman, because only Feynman can actually invent a metaphor that is so good for what a computer is that it even works for this. Um, so we'll use that. Now let's start. Uh, so arbitrary code. Um, first we're going to talk about a technique called uh, stack overflow um, exploitation. So I'm a security guy, pretend. So what I do of course is uh, walk around and rummage in garbage bins of uh, banks. And uh, look what I found. I found this document. It was three pages stapled together. I put them apart for you. Um, these are the first two. You can't read very well, so I'll read it out to you. We can see new account application form and application form internal. This one's to be filled by a customer, this one by client only, by a clerk only. Um, wow, that's going to be fun. Uh, so we have these forms, they're pretty much alike. You have here... Uh, is that? Yeah, it's good. You have here... Um, how much you earn, we can see the bank clerk did some work, he translated where you live into a sum of money which is the worth of your house, and you can see all the name and date and, uh, and I don't know, uh, address and stuff, it's exactly intact, in fact, it's so intact, the clerk manually copied even the, the bigger space that someone put here, so this clerk really likes he takes pride in how exact his copying is. Uh, we notice a few more things. For example, we notice that here you have six rows for entering your address, and here you have three rows for entering your address. This will be interesting. And I notice, uh, please uh, enclose bills of property, which indeed are enclosed. Here is the bill of property for where you live. Um, and as a security guy, all of this stuff really interests me. Um, but there's one more thing that interests me more than everything. Here we have in a different pen, in a blue pen, in different handwriting, somebody wrote procedure for processing um, private application. So I can imagine what happened here. There was clerk A, which sat in front of the customer while he filled this form. Then clerk A took an empty form like this wrote, process it according to process uh, procedure for processing private application, stapled everything together, gave it to clerk B, which did all of the research work and uh, copied everything, and then kept processing it according to procedure for processing private application. Now, as a security guy, I get all sorts of ideas when I see this. Um, so let's try to write our first exploit. Um, I'll walk into the bank, of course I'll be wearing a fake hat, fake mustache. What is exploit? Exploit is something that exploits a vulnerability, something that um, uses a vulnerability to your advantage or just for fun. Um, so I walk into a, the bank wearing fake hat, fake mustache. Fake um, hat. Well, fake hat, of course. I can't use my real hat, they recognize me. Um, and I say, hello, uh, I'm Bilbo Baggins, I want to open a new account. Uh, I give all my details, and when I write my address, so I write it like this. There is just like the previous one we saw, Bilbo Baggins, uh, one venture pro, Hobbiton, enter, 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 tab, tab, procedure for absorb. All right, let's see what happens. I, of course, attach a bill of property because uh, that's bank procedure. And then uh, it all gets filled out, written in blue pen, process according to procedure for private application, passed on to the second clerk, 
which copies everything, does the research, um, then he copies my address and he overwrites some of the previous stuff that was written here. Now it says procedure for absorbed private application. And of course, bank clerks uh, follow procedure exactly. That's their job. That's what they're paid to do. So now he wants to pass it on to the next guy. So he wants to see what's the next step. He looks in his uh, filing cabinet, the huge filing cabinet that every bank in the 50s has for his procedure for absorbed private application. There's no such procedure. So everything crashes and I don't know, the bank sends me an official letter saying we're sorry, there were internal complications, we cannot uh, open an account for your address. Hello, uh, is your uh, son really named uh, Drop Table? Because uh, he dropped all our tables. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so there's trouble here, everything crashes. But we can fix that, let's try again. But this time, instead of walking in with fake hat, fake mustache, I'll walk in with different fake hat, different fake mustache, um, and I'll give this application. Uh, it says, yeah, my name is uh, Robert Levy, I li uh, my mailing address is Robert Levy, the borough uh, Order is in Chaparral, doesn't really matter. I chose the name Robert, by the way, by going into babynames.com and searching for names in P, R, O, looking for the name that comes alphabetically before the word process. The closest name to the word process, and I was very glad to see there's a name Robert, which is recognized in some weird languages, I think mostly in resin code. Um, <laughs> so I give them my bill of property, and this bill of property is two pages. The first page is uh, the standard bill of property. The second page is a page that says procedure for absorbed private application. Uh, we can't see very well. We'll try to zoom in a bit. So uh, uh, it's specially crafted. The first uh, section says this is a special procedure uh, used in case of hostile takeover by middle management. The president chose you uh, with the board. You will be uh, handsomely compensated for proving the president's trust justified. Do not inform your superiors or co-workers about everything you do here. Just, you know, to improve my chances. Then there's the important stuff that says go out of your office. There's a man in the bank, he's wearing a monocle. And of course, when I do this, I wear a fake hat, fake mustache, fake monocle. There's a man with a monocle, except book entitled Operating Procedures from this guy. Book contains new operating procedures. All current procedures are hereby declared outdated and void. Do not do anything according to regular bank procedures. Only act according to new operating procedures and book entitled Operating Procedures. I heard repeating really helps to convince people. Um, so now I uh, leave, uh, wait a few days so the cameras forget me, wear a different hat, different fake mustache, remove my fake monocle, uh, and do this again, the same trick from last time. But now it works. Now the clerk wants to continue, so we continue according to procedure for absorbed private application. And he goes to his filing cabinet, let's see, P, 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 okay, P, P, R, P, R, O, Robert, procedure, great. Oh, and he finds a page, procedure for absorbed private application. And it says, you've won the lottery, the president trusts you personally. Now do everything I say, don't do anything the bank says anymore, ever. So what I've done here is not just... Now you need your monocle. Hmm? Because now he follows it, and now he'll go and look for the guy in the monocle. Yeah, yeah, so what I've done here is arbitrary code execution. It's not just a regular uh, vulnerability where you get the bank to give you money or you find a way to um, go past the alarm, drill through the hole, through the wall, uh, dig past everything, I don't know, open the safe, get access to things the bank doesn't want you to access. This actually, for one of the bank employees, completely replaced his job, everything he does, his complete behavior, with behavior I dictate. I gave him a new Bible to live um, according to. I can make him dance. I can make him, um, I don't know, uh, 
fly to Oklahoma and uh, I can make him do whatever I want because I'm now his boss. I have, I, I tell him what to do with this book that I gave him that he trusts. This is arbitrary code execution. It's barely possible with banks from the 50s. Today, of course, we don't have any more filing clerks. They were all replaced by computers. And it's even easier with computers because they trust you blindly according to what their programmer told them to do. So if their procedure says uh, write address and there's six places to write address uh, and uh, only three here and you overwrite this, they'll actually go there and do whatever is there, which is awesome. It's amazing. I, I cannot describe how awesome it is, so instead I'll just continue my talk. Um, so this was the simplest case possible for a, what we call a stack overflow, uh, which is when you have a stack, say, of papers, and you get a computer to overwrite the next page with something that was uh, only meant for this page, and the next page contains somewhere where it's written to the computer what to do next, like follow this process. That's called a stack overflow. Um, what if procedures, instead of being so stored by name in the filing cabinet, uh, the bank is a bit bigger, it has lots of procedures, so they store them, they name them according to their index in the filing cabinet. Say, I go into the bank and I rummage the garbage, and what I find is not procedure for blah blah blah, but 45C3, which is obviously, um, you know, cupboard 45, drawer C, um, subsection 3. And it says follow the procedure here. So now I have a problem because I have less exact control over where my Probert application will go. I cannot give out an application called uh, 45C4 and know that it, it will be there. Uh, so I need to do something about this. You understand what's the problem? I cannot control exactly where my new injected process will sit in the cabinet. So what I do is uh, do the whole Probert routine again. I come in, I say, hello, I'm Probert Levi. Um, here's my bill of property, and it continues. Proceed to next page, proceed to next page, proceed to next page, proceed to next page, proceed to next page. Proceed to next page proceed to next... I give out like a really long bill of property. And just in the end, there's um, one page saying familiar stuff that we already know. And now, um, all I need to do is write some address that is probably in the area of where my uh, application will sit. And since I gave out so many papers for, for my application, they probably occupy a few cabinets and if I give anywhere in the area, it will fall on one of the proceed to next page pages. So the clerk will spend a few days proceeding to next page, proceeding to next page, proceeding to next page. Eventually, you'll find the you win the lottery, you now work for me page, and I'll have arbitrary code execution, which is awesome. Um, but what if uh, processes were not in the filing cabinet? We were talking about the Goldsmith and Goldsmith uh, small town bank. Now we're talking about uh, Berkeley Bank, which is a bit bigger, and it realized that it can't afford to have processes all in the filing cabinet. It needs to give a copy of all processes to every employee. So they have a book of process, just like I gave him. An official book of process that sits on your desk and contains all processes. Um, and I cannot anymore um, just insert my process in there because it's a book, it's not a filing cabinet. I don't have control over it. So all I need to do is um, rummage in the garbage until I find a copy of the book. Then I need to read the book and find an interesting page. Here's an example for an interesting page that might happen in such a book. Uh, they happen a lot. This page says uh, official procedures, D19, procedure for updating procedure book. So it says travel to headquarters to accept book here by update procedures from president manually. Make sure you receive this 
personally from President, in tamper-proof packaging, travel bag, and box tamper-proof packaging, extract contained book. Hold book with both hands. Make sure that update procedure are sealed with official bank seal. Six, from now on, the document you're holding acts as official operation procedures. All old procedures are outdated and void. So you can see the bank was really afraid that they somehow switch in the middle or anything and they took lots of countermeasures against this. But this D19 is, is still a very useful procedure because I can go with my, um, with my uh, Bilbo Baggins uh, hat and uh, mustache and I can hand in this procedure that says Bilbo Baggins, blah blah blah, Hobbiton. D19.6. Let's go back a bit. So I said proceed according to procedure D19.6. From now on, the document you're holding in your hand acts as official operating procedures and all old procedures are outdated and void. <laughs> There are no need to read all this, it's uh, meaningless stuff, it's for another form. This form just needs subsection 6. Um, and we win. Let's see. Wait. So we have uh, more techniques. All of these, by the way, are exactly one-to-one -one, um, true stories of how you do things with computers. All, all of these protections are exactly the protections computers have, like not letting you, n not reading code from places you can affect, so you can find something in their code that wasn't meant to, but if you jump into the middle of it, it says, read my book, it's your new Bible. Um, so what if uh, processes were not in the final cabinet? I think I meant to say something more here. Um, what if we didn't have this amazingly useful procedure that does exactly what we want in sub-procedure 6. So there's still stuff we can do. For example, let's find more than one useful page. Uh, we just read through the book and find, piece together all sorts of interesting things. For example, we have procedure of approving employee vacation, um, which says all sorts of things, and say seal document on the left, official bank seal, leave document on the left, procedure next procedure. Um, Official procedures, E18 procedure for labeling customer, customer mail envelope. So it says place an empty envelope on the right, copy all text from left to right, return form on the left to filing cabinet to the same row of protect. It was taken from, sorry for reading so fast, uh, try to just read along with me. Uh, procedure for preparing data summary, it says put down the document you're holding on right, move all documents on desk one, place left. If there are no documents on right, proceed to the procedure process according to procedure A6 once more. Um, C3 procedure for preparing for meeting, place procedure is book on the left, place official bank stationery on the right, proceed to next procedure. So this bank, this uh, Berkeley bank, not only did they uh, not have this amazingly useful, um, useful page, they also require all followed procedures to carry um, the official bank seal and be uh, on official bank stationery. But from all these procedures, um, I can piece together a way of, uh, of attacking even this. Here's what I'll do. Um, I'll put my Bilbo Baggins uh, thing, and it will say A6.4, C3.9, E8.5, F2.8, D19.6. If somebody can note this, so we can then go back, okay. it will be faster. Okay, so A6.4. <coughs> Let's see here. A6.4 says, uh, put down the document you're holding on right. Move all documents on the desk one place left. So this is uh, the document I'm holding. That's um, the, the Bilbo Baggins form. Uh, move everything one place left. If there are no documents, proceed to next procedure. So there are no documents on right. So I proceed to C3.9. Place official bank stationery on right, so I put official bank stationery. Um, what's next? Anybody remember? E8.5, F2.8, D19.6. So let's see 
E8.5, right? Copy and text, all text from left to right. So I'm copying the Bilbo Baggins form from left um, to the official bag stationery. Uh, then I return form on the left to filing cabinet. I don't care anymore because we've done what we needed. And I proceed to the next procedure, which says, uh, what was that? F2.8. Uh, seal document on left with official bank seal. Okay, sealed it. Um, leaf document on the left, I now hold it in my hand. And then we have uh, our last one, which was it? Oh, th then we have D19.6. So I'm now holding in my hand a document that uh, has procedures. It's written on official bank stationery and it has the bank stamp. This is called return oriented programming. It's an amazing thing. People actually wrote compilers that look at the code of a program and piece together ways to execute an arbitrary program you wrote using bits and pieces of that program, of that original program. So their output is something um, like this that actually does whatever you want. That's amazing. And we're up, just when I wanted to say we're up. See, this means we have extra time if we don't. So, hope you guys were having fun. I uh, hope you learned something important. <laughs> try this at home. Don't try this on other people's computers, but do try this at home. It's an amazing field. It's especially amazing to actually get your hands dirty and do it. <laughs>